Hello, accounting superstars. This is Professor Don Bush. I've been a professor for about 30 years and a CPA for about that long. And it looks like my dog Chewy here wants some attention. So, uh, so anyways, today's lesson is about uh, the uh, asset turnover. It's a very simple, basic indicator of how efficiently management is using the assets of the company. So it's a good thing to know, especially if you want to be an investor or work in finance. So very simple. Can't get any simpler than this, guys. All we're doing is comparing two things. That's all we're doing. We're just comparing the amount of assets with the amount of sales. That's all there is to it. So easy. You can do you can do this. So here's the formula for the asset turnover. It's right here. So the asset turnover is equal to sales minus total assets. That's all there is to it. Easy. So let's figure it out. I'm going to split the screen. And we'll figure it out for the Sunset Sailboat Company. Here we go. So down to the financial statement. So sales. Now sales is located on the income statement. So here we go. We'll just find them right here. Here's Here are the numbers right here, folks. Let me highlight them so they stand out just a bit. So there we are. Here, Here's the revenue or revenue or sales. I use the words interchangeably. So this 849750, we'll put it right up here. It's the uh, sales for the very first year. Uh, sales for the second year, 1,580,000. Sales for the third year, uh, 3,100,000. And sales for the fourth year, there we go, 3,900,000. So folks, what we want to know is, is the, uh, are, is the management using the assets efficiently? Are they using the assets to create uh, sales and revenue and subsequently income. So what we need next are, are the total assets. Now total assets can be found on the balance sheet. All right, balance sheet, and it's usually halfway down the balance sheet, total assets, and here they are right there. So we'll just copy these numbers up above, 2,390,850, put that right in there, 2,893,700, there you go, and so on and so forth. There it is. Now, all we have to do is divide. Just um, take 849,750 divided by 2,398,50, and we get 0.4. Now, I've had some students that carry this uh, result, this answer out to like 10 decimal places, and that's kind of ridiculous. You don't need to do that. Um, like one decimal place is pretty good, maybe, maybe two, two might be better. Now when you're doing your homework or if you're working on these uh, computerized account, uh, computerized learning systems, oftentimes they get kind of picky on how you put your answer in. So make sure you put in enough decimal places to, uh, to keep the uh, computer program happy. But uh, in reality, one to two decimal places is usually pretty good. So just divide again for the second year and divide for the third year and divide for the fourth year. So for the fourth year, for instance, it's 3.9 million divided by 4,744,000. And there you go, 0 0.8. So, um, so what are we looking for here? What are we looking for? Well, what we're looking for is, is the asset turnover. Is it is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Or is it staying the same? And in this case here, it, it happens to be increasing. So it started at 0.4, now it's at 0.5, and it, it's actually doubled from 0.4, you know, to 0.8 here. And so things seem to be on an upward trend. I can't tell which way is left or right on the screen here. Uh, it, maybe it's this way. It's an upward trend, or, or maybe it's that way. But anyways, it's an upward trend, and that uh, can be a good sign. That can be a good sign. That could mean that uh, that the amount of sales is, is growing faster than the amount of assets. On the other hand, a growing asset turnover ratio might be concerning. And what it is, is maybe management is not investing in fixed assets. Maybe they're not building up their fixed assets. Maybe they're not keeping their uh, fixed assets uh, maintained. And, and because what it is, is uh, when, when sales grow, well, your asset turnover becomes larger. You know, it turns over faster. And when your assets shrink down, the assets shrink down, that will also increase the, the uh, asset turnover ratio. 
By the way, a good way to remember all this is um, the way you figure it out is you take total assets and you turn it over onto the bottom. In other words, uh, turn the assets over. That's how it gets its name, asset turnover. So turn the assets over and put sales on the top. So sales divided by total assets. It's just how I remember how all these turnover ratios go. So, but uh, back to the point here that when um, the asset turnover is increasing like it is here, it, it could mean a good sign. It could be a good thing. And the, on the other hand, it could be a bad sign. And so you may have to look into it deeper and find out what's going on. Here are some details about the asset turnover ratio. Here we go. The first one. So number one, the asset turnover ratio is a broad measure of how effectively assets are generating sales. So um, so you wanna see, generally, generally speaking, you wanna see that asset turnover building, picking up, uh, generating more and more sales. It means that you're using your assets more effectively. But as mentioned twice already, this will be the third time, but, but you gotta be careful. When you have a rising asset turnover ratio, that can also mean that management is not investing in their assets. And that could be a bad thing down the road. So uh, number two here, number two, total assets are usually average. So in your textbook, uh, in every textbook, they say, take your beginning total assets and your ending total assets, add them together, divide by two, and get the average total assets. And, and uh, w when you're working on your homework, your professor may want you to do that. So take your beginning total assets, your ending total assets, add them together, divide by two, and that way you can get an average. I didn't do that, uh, and, and I, I normally don't, when, because usually when I'm uh, analyzing companies, uh, I'm trying to go rather quickly. And, um, and so I don't take the time to average the assets. The only time that I would is when the total assets are growing and growing or growing, or, or if it's this way, or should be that way, <laughs> growing, growing, and growing. Uh, that, then I'll, I'll average the assets, but oftentimes I, I won't, especially if the a total assets are staying rather constant. All right, the third thing. A faster tone turnover is usually better, just like we have here for the Sunset Sailboat Company. And by the way, let's look at Captain Jack Sailboats. Captain Jack is a competitor of the Sunset Sailboat Company. So let's see here in the first year, a turnover of 1, 1.2, 1.1, and in the last year, 1.3. So it seems that Captain Jack's uh, turnover ratio is staying pretty constant, if not increasing a little bit. So this might be a good sign. But again, just, just like any other company, it could be the reason why it's increasing is that they're not investing, reinvesting in themselves. Really important here, folks. Really important. All right. So number four, uh, this will be the fourth time mentioned. <laughs> Management may, not, may choose to not invest in assets to improve the asset turnover ratio. So you gotta watch that. So when the asset turnover ratio is going up, it could mean a good thing, could mean a bad thing, and, and you wanna find out. So here are uh, four companies, and they're in very, very, very different industries, and they're not comparable to one another. And they're not comparable to uh, the Sunset Sailboat Company or Captain Jack's. So they're just too wildly different. So Walmart, you've probably been in a Walmart. Well, I looked up their turnover ratio and it's 2.2. So a good way to read this is, is for every $1 of total assets that Walmart has, they're generating $2.20 in sales. Good way to remember it. Let's look at Southwest. Southwest is very different. Point three, might be because Southwest has a lot of jets. I, I'm not sure if they lease them or, or they own them outright. They probably lease them. But nowadays, we have to have the leases in, as part of the total assets. So they've got a an, an asset turnover ratio of 0. 0.30. So how do we read it? Well, what you do is you say for every $1 of assets, they are generating 30 cents, 30 cents of revenue. And you might say, boy, that sounds really awful and low. Well, maybe it's typical for the uh, 
airline industry to have a very, very low asset turnover ratio. So uh, you could probably compare Southwest to uh, Delta or United or you know some other uh, airline company, but you certainly do not want to compare Southwest to Walmart. Bad mistake. They're, they're not comparable. They're not even closely comparable. Apple Computer, let's see how what their asset turnover ratio is. Their asset turnover ratio is 0.80. And I would imagine that Apple Computer, um, it would be very, very difficult to find a good comparison company to compare against Apple Computer. It, you have to be so careful when you're comparing companies because most companies really aren't comparable. So their asset turnover ratio is 0.80. I think what I would be looking for if I was at, looking at Apple Computer's asset turnover ratio, I'd look at it over time. I'd say, well, is it getting a little better, a little worse, that kind of thing. And as you know, uh, if the asset turnover ratio is getting, you know, going up, upward trend, it, that could be a good sign or it might be a bad sign. Molson Coors, let's see what they've got. 0. 0.50. Well, I know that Molson Coors has a lot of equipment, a lot of, um, a lot of fixed assets. I, I've been in their plant here in Golden, Colorado. And, uh, and and it's it's huge. It's they have so much in um, fixed assets. It's unbelievable. And um, so the way to read it is for every one dollar of uh, assets, for every one dollar of total assets, they generate fifty cents in sales. And again, you might say, well, is that good or bad? Well, you, with Molson Coors, you could probably compare them against Budweiser, possibly maybe some other breweries. But I would also compare them over time too, just to see if it's improving or declining. So, so there you go, folks. There is the asset turnover ratio. It's really easy, guys. Just take sales divided by total assets. That's all you do. Turn the total assets over. Turn it. Put total assets on the bottom. Sales always on the top. In fact, that's how most all the turnover ratios work. Whenever you hear something like uh, receivables turnover, you know, turn the receivables over. Put sales on the top. Uh, working capital turnover, put working capital on the bottom, sales on the top, cash turnover, cash on the bottom, sales on the top. All these turnover ratios work the same way. They're, they're easy to remember. So wish you luck. Hope you like this lesson. Hit the subscribe button and the like button, guys. And that way I'll know that you like these videos and I'll make more for you. And also uh, check into accountingsuperstars.com. I've got all these videos listed by topic. It'd be a lot easier for you to find them. Uh, find topics that are relevant to what, what you need to learn. So until next time, over and out.